one uh, that is a heavier that is more costlier and you could do that at a lesser cost over the air so fixed wireless access is that space uh, to that i believe it is a competition because um, you are providing uh, a, a connection to a stationary user um, at someone's house he probably has a modem which is picking up the signal of that 5g signal um, from that mobile uh, operator and giving a good speed within the premises but if you have that dish um, from this from the supplier of uh, of Elon Musk company then obviously you you could do the same so if um, if it is cheaper then i'd like to believe that it has a, a very tough competition to offer to the mobile operators in that domain we see that all of the people that are living on this earth are now populating the metaverse and you know when things start things could really have the potential to go south on the metaverse as well like uh i came across a video where there was a, a female gamer community that were being harassed on the on the internet and with the concept of anonymity and you know metaverse is going to have very high percentage of that so do you think things could go really south on the metaverse and with respect to harassment or other things that exist in the real world as well now that the people will have an access to anonymity on a very high um you're right uh, so um the potential for that to happen uh, surely is there so uh, how safe it is how uh, how well is it treated uh, will determine a lot of things uh, and whether i come uh, anonymously or as as bilal uh, onto certain networks and uh, and how do i stop various things so again um, regulations um, what kind of legal aspects to it uh, cyber laws around it uh, will determine um, a, a lot of how um, it it gets shaped up and if it's if it says if it stays aloft or it goes south uh, as you mentioned whether uh, it has that risk it surely has so obviously it would still have a usage uh, how much do people trust it how much do people get come on board uh, on it how much people adopt it uh, will matter a lot on how safe uh, per se and how secure uh, things would be um, at their end um, i guess time will tell <laughs> that's true that was an interesting perspective of yours but if we talk about stalking for example like how would that mean the right so so you mean that uh, in a in a business sense or uh, yes. oh, um i guess just to like we in in today's 2d internet um where we block people where we don't allow uh, so we where we upload lots of our own um, personal content uh, and we only allow certain contexts to view it or saved contexts to view it or uh, added contexts to view it or you know um it, it it seems to be that it would probably something be something of the sort um but i i don't know how many loopholes would be left so if i'm in a classroom environment if i'm in a virtual environment if i'm uh, in an environment that has uh, you know an underlying statement that you know there are risks around it and you know you go in at your own risk in the in the metaverse that you are entering into um um it could be there but again um this is where laws and regulations uh, would 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 best protect it so today's laws and regulations are obviously have been not today but perhaps the conventional ones have been around people humans objects the real things uh, and then comes the virtual aspects to it and then obviously regulations cyber cyber related aspects uh, have started to grow um and you know again um today's uh, cyber accusations have gone out to state levels to country levels you know one country accusing the other country of meddling in their you know internal politics vote casting etc so imagine Uh, uh providing a platform of being able to vote through you know a metaverse kind of environment and then you have this accusation coming through that you know uh, another country has come up and you know is, is tried to do so um, a, a, a lot of the security around it a lot of the laws around it a lot of 
what is an evidence and what is not, what are the watermarks that you leave behind when you do such a things uh, determines um, how much that can happen and how much that can be stopped and discouraged. And if it does happen, what kind of um, sufficient evidences quantify, qualify for it to, to, to go into punitive action. I really appreciate your perspective on this one because I believe that there are going to be a hundred ethical dilemmas that are attacked. <laughs> that, that's another paradigm to it that, you know, in terms of uh, stalking, do we agree to one definition or in terms of um, what is what is ethically correct and not correct? I, I think the world as a whole has evolved what, what we would view as something um, not so ethical, not very few years back, you know, has actually gone into legislation and has become ethical. Uh, so how that how that translates in a metaverse is a is an interesting context and a good observation to wait and see how that happens. Uh, thank you so much, sir. These were all the questions that I was always curious about, and I'm sure I have left on on a lot of other things. But as I mentioned before at the very start, that this isn't going to be like an interview, but rather a conversation. So uh, the things that I might have missed out on, uh, would you like to share your perspective on something else that I may have not asked you? Um, I, I think we, uh, the, the, all the questions were interesting and very um, uh, overarching in terms of addressing a lot.